Hello, race fans. I'm Danny Padilla, and you are chilling with the villain right here on CWTV Motorsports on YouTube. I went with CWTV because when I went villain, team villain, the villain, any kind of villain that was on there already, and it would have been just mixed in with everything else on YouTube. So I put CWTV, and um, I am still doing battle with another CWTV, so I put motorsports on the end of it, so hopefully you'll find me when searching for me on YouTube. But I wanted to talk to you today about how I got started into racing. So a lot of people, they got started into racing because it was trickled down, you know, like generation to generation, or somebody at a very young age put somebody in a go-kart and they just started racing from there. It wasn't that way with me. So when I was about 12 years old, my family moved to another part of town, the south side of Phoenix, which is kind of the poor side, um, borderline ghetto. But anyways, um, I lived at 31st Avenue and Buckeye. And um, anyways, I was new to the neighborhood. And um, I, anyways, long story short, I would always hear this roar over on the weekends. I'd hear this noise in the distance. It was all this roaring and it would pick up and go away, pick up and go away. And I had no clue what it was. I didn't know anything about racing or anything to that effect. I didn't know nothing about racetracks. I just didn't have a clue. Well, lucky for me, my mom used to go out dancing on Friday and Saturday nights. So that left me home alone with my little brother. And um, one night, I just wanted to follow that noise, so I hopped on my bicycle and drove, or started riding my bike and following the sound. About three miles later, 35th Avenue and Broadway, there was a little place called Manzanita Speedway, one of the most iconic racetracks still to this day. Billy Boat was raised there. Sammy Swindell was raised there. Ricky Thornton Jr. was raised there. And a ton of other, Jeff Gordon has raced on that track in the sprint cars. There has been so many well-known drivers out there that have raced there. And I know I've left out several, but that just gives you an idea how iconic this track was. Um, it was a one of a kind. It was a three eighths mile and a half mile. And um, it was awesome. So I, um, the first night I went there, so I got, the, I went there and I was peeking through the fence. So what happened is I went over to turn one I'm just trying to fit in there because turns three and four was surrounded by junkyards and one and two was on the on a, on a road like like maybe 100 feet off of the road um, off of a main road so I went and there was just a little like five foot fence I hopped it and I went up the hill and I looked through the concrete and then the guardrails that they had up and I was peeking through about this much and I'm sitting there in turn one having no idea how dangerous that was I was looking at it and they would come by and they would throw it would throw stuff at me and that night had to been a saturday night because it was non-wing sprint cars so anyways i was watching the race through that crack for the longest time so anyways some black car i'd have no idea who it was come sideways and was coming right at me i mean like literally right at me i ducked and all of a sudden i hear the crowd go crazy like ah they were sighing and i um heard all this crashing and this sprint car literally hit the wall right in front of me, went through the catch fence, which was just telephone poles and guardrail, blew right through them, landed outside of the track, down the hill, and went through the chain link fence that I had climbed and landed out by my bike. Literally, I was the first person to him. So I remember getting to him and I distinctively remember one of his gloves were halfway off of his hand the other glove was missing. That's how much centrifugal force you have when you impact something or when you're flipping. It literally pulled him right out of his gloves. It was unbelievable. He was not knocked out. I was talking to him, are you okay, are you okay? And he was sitting there and he landed face up. There was no fire or nothing like that, but he landed on his wheels, what was left of him. And um, then all of a sudden, all these people just started coming in off the track, jumping over, are you okay, are you okay? So I'm helping him pick up all the parts and pieces. And he's like, hey, get back in here. We're about to go green. So, I mean, it, 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 this was some minutes, you know, they had to get the car picked up and brought back in and blah, 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 blah. So anyways, they're like, Hey, get back in here. We're, we're going to seal this back up. So I didn't say shit. I just went, hopped right in there with them, went to the infield. And next thing you know, I am in the pits watching this race and nobody's the wiser from there. I was completely hooked. So here it is about midnight. I go back out and I go to get my bike and my bike is gone. Somebody had stole it and I just left it laying there like a dumbass in the hood. So of course it's gonna be gone. So what do I do? I know my mom gets home around one o'clock, 1.30, and I'm at three miles away 
at around midnight or 12.30 or whatever. So I am hauling ass running home the entire way. So I make it back home and that ended up being a weekly ritual for me. I started doing it over and over and over again every week. And then um, walking from school, I was in eighth grade. So walking from school to home, I'd always pass past, the, I'd always go past this, um, this uh, tow truck company called, um, I forgot the name, I'll give it to you in a minute. Um, but anyways, there was this record service and um, I walked in there one day and said, hey, do you guys have any work for me? Can I do anything? You know, so I got a job washing their trucks. And then later on, I got to learn um, how to back up, how to drive a stick shift. They'd let me, when the drivers would come in, I'd hop in the truck, go back there, back it in, unhook it, do all the things that they hated. I absolutely loved. Um, never wrecked a vehicle, backed them up. I learned how to back up and drive big trucks from the word go. I was just a natural at it. And um, thank God I didn't tear anything up and that they trusted me, so I got to have a lot of fun. So I grew up without a dad, so being around all these men were kind of fun, and they didn't treat me like a kid. I got to do a lot of things. Um, I got to go on wrecks, and I've seen some of the worst wrecks you could ever imagine. And um, and I used to recover wrecked airplanes. They used to, reco re they used to re recover wrecked airplanes. I'd go over the weekend with them on these weekend trips up in the mountains and recover airplanes. So I had a pretty exciting childhood from the age of about 12 to 16. So anyways, um, Little did I know, they were the record company for Manzanita Speedway. Well, they would give them 10 free tickets every night, and my buddy would never use them. He just happened to tell me one time. So I would go, and I'd pick up those tickets, and that was my idea of drug dealing. I'd go pimp out them 10 tickets, <laughs> and and at the end of, um, at the end of, the, I mean, I well, I would get rid of nine of them. So I'd get rid of nine of them, take my five bucks a piece, blah, 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 blah. I got like 40 bucks, I'd go in there and eat me a green chili burrito and a drink and get there and sit and watch the races for free. And I did this for months on end before they caught on and stopped giving me tickets, but it was a blast. And so that's how I got hooked into racing. Um, man, I used to watch Bill Cheeseburg and, um, and some other well-known people that I just really was just at all with um, when it comes to racing. and. Um, so anyways, I, I, got, I just got all involved in that. And then later on in my 20s, I tried to get into racing the best I could. I never had any money. Um, I was financially deprived. It's a nice way of saying I was a broke bitch. So anyways, um, I just never really got into racing like I wanted to, but I did. I was always around it. I always put myself around it. My brother would have a couple cars here and there and he would go. And at that time I was still too young to go with him, but it kind of like got the ball, the whole ball rolling. So every since then I wanted to go get a race car and I would go get this car, that car, and I'd finished dead last and I just had a horrible time, but at least I was out there having fun. So, um, so anyways, that's, that's kind of how I got started. And then when I was 30 in my like early thirties, I bought a car off of a guy named Larry Price. Um, awesome, awesome guy, his son, Danny Price. Um, that's where I met Anthony Madrid and, and so many other good drivers out in that area. Um, I got to race with them and race side by side and I got to beat them. They beat me. It was a really good way to judge. And lucky for me, I come out the gate winning. I bought this car and I won my fourth night out. So what would happen is we'd go Friday night Manzanita Speedway, Saturday night Canyon Raceway. So I went Friday Manzi, Saturday Canyon. Saturday I was leading that race, my second night out. I was led the whole race with one to go, I or no, with two to go. I drifted up in three and four, two cars got underneath me. I was able to get back around one of them and I finished second, my second night out. So then the next Friday at Manzi, I ran. And then that next Saturday is when I won my first main event win in a um, factory stock. So then I ran um, factories and modifies from there on in and I had an awesome time. I was, ha I was lucky enough to accumulate 21 main event wins and then I just kind of hit and missed racing from there on on out. I never really got full seasons out except for those two seasons. So um, I just kind of um, was there one minute and not there. So I moved to Oklahoma about 15 years ago, 16 years ago, and I was just on off racing again and it was just, it just financially wasn't there for me. So then three years ago I bought, um, I had the I had the luck of buying a race car and I bought a 2016 MB Customs Modified. 
and um, I've had a lot of fun in it, and I've got so many seconds, and I've led so many races. I've won so many heat races, so many B mains. I mean, I've really had some success, but I've not got my win yet in the modified. So, so um, I am winless here in Oklahoma. But anyway, so it was just because I just, for one, I know I gave up a couple of wins. That I do know. Um, and I've just got beaten out by a better motor, by a better driver. Um, I just got them taken away from me. So now, this year, I, I so I raced two years ago. I ran, I ran 21, 22, 23 I took off because I didn't have a motor and um, I just needed to chill. So I put my car in jack stand so I didn't race at all in 2023. So this year, the start of 2024, I was able to get a motor. So now we're gonna put it in and our first week is supposed to be um, this coming Friday. I thought it was gonna be the 16th, um, the Grandpa George race with Chase Holland out in Mississippi. But I just found out, because I don't keep up with the news like I should, right here in my backyard, just five miles down the road at Tulsa Speedway, they are having their chiller race um, on the 6th. So my shocks are out at Integra, so I'm gonna call them on Monday and see if they can get them to me by Friday. And if so, we're gonna race Friday night. I will not have my wrap on the car. I just don't have the money for it right now, and that's fine, I'm okay with it. But at least we have a chance to race, and that's what we're gonna try to do. So anyways, I would love for you guys, of all videos, I would love to know how you guys know me, if you guys know me, if you've met me from somewhere. I would love to know how you guys got into racing. That's just, um, to me, everybody's got their unique and interesting story. So this is one I want you to take the time out and put in your comments how I got into racing. I'd really love to hear your story and um, I'd really love some feedback on it. But that's how I got started and um, I hope you enjoy this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. That's really gonna help me out a bit, a lot. Um, I would love to get to a thousand subscribers since I'm brand new, but um, it'll probably just take the slow road now to pay my dues like everybody else. But anyways, peace out. Thanks for watching. I'm Danny Padilla and you were just chilling with the villain.